So did you do it? Were you able to come up with a couple of brand essences and some content marketing that support them? Um, I'm going to talk about two. Uh, so uh, one of them is actually not on this slide and the other one is. So uh, Nike. Nike, everyone basically knows the brand essence of Nike. It's their tagline, just do it, right? Uh, and then the other one that I want to talk about is Volvo, right? And Volvo's uh, basic you know, brand essence could be summed up in one word, safe, right? Uh, make cars safe and reliable cars uh, would be another way to put it. Maybe uh, integrate technology, luxury, and safety to create the best cars. You know, there's a number of ways you could put it, but that's the basic idea, right? So they each actually came out with a piece of content marketing during the Euro 2016 games, the, the football soccer games. Uh, and uh, they both got a lot of uh, engagement, right? So um, Nike did this one called The Switch, which had uh, Cristiano Ronaldo uh, switching places kind of in a, you know, almost like a, um, a trading places type style event with a, uh, um, a teenager. Uh, from uh, England, right? And so it's all about like, you know, they, they both wake up in each other's bodies in a different place. Uh, and um, they, uh, they then the, the teenager who is now Ronaldo, right? Uh, winds up training well enough that he gets back, he gets into uh, the, the European Premier Games again uh, and winds up playing Ronaldo uh, in a game, right? And on the other hand, the teenager who's in the body of Ronaldo winds up doing like these amazing things that no one has ever seen Ronaldo do before, right? And it's all about like, it emphasizes that just do it, right? Like no matter where you are, no matter what you are, whatever your situations are, you know, just do what you're doing, right? Just play the games, right? Uh, and so that's a, it's a very engaging piece of content. Um, as you know, when I captured this particular screenshot, it's 61 million views, right? Uh, it actually had over 300,000 shares where people had sent the content on to someone else. Uh, so it's clearly an example. And they, these both of these movies, by the way, are not short ads, right? They're not the 30 second roll ads that you see on a lot of YouTube. These are the Switch video is six minutes long. The Volvo video is three and a half minutes long. Right, and uh, actually the Volvo video has multiple ad like versions, like this is just the first one, right? Um, and uh, it's just great examples of creating content that really brings people in, right? So the Volvo ad, on the other hand, it's interesting. It talks about how, you know, um, this famous Swedish footballer Zlatan, right? Like he, 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 he trains in a different way. He lives in a different way because he's from Sweden. It's this harsh climate, right? Like you have to learn how to do things uh, differently being from Sweden, right? Uh, and it kind of really reiterates the message of, uh, of the same thing that Volvo does, right? That they come from Sweden, they make their cars safe, they make them reliable, they make them luxurious and integrated with good technology, right? And all this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, it goes on for three and a half minutes describing kind of his training practice and drawing parallels to Volvo. And of course, there's a lot of product placement at Volvo, much like there is in the Nike ads. Uh, and that video has almost uh, uh, six and a half, uh, sorry, seven million views at the time uh, that I was looking at this particular content. And it also had quite a few shares. The, uh, during Euro 2016, the Nike football ad wound up being the most shared video that was out there. Uh, but this, uh, the Volvo ad wound up being the second most shared uh, video out there, right? Uh, so these are great examples of content marketing that really support uh, the brand essence. So let's talk a little bit about personas. So personas uh, are essentially when you go to design a piece of content marketing, what you need to develop first. And a persona is a particular profile, a very detailed profile in some cases, uh, that a writer creates to embody the characteristics of that target audience. You really want to focus on the motivations of that persona, right? Like what they would do. And often they do this by actually writing out a full biography, right? The persona assists you then in kind of segmenting and understanding your target market. So you can write these different personas and then when you create the content, you're actually creating it directly for that uh, imaginary person, right? Um, the persona is a framework, right, through which you can guide any content you create. So I have an example up here of one. So this is, you know, a, um, a product. This is actually a persona that was developed, I believe, for a telecommunications company, right? And they were, uh, and they have this very detailed biography for this um, uh, a woman in India. Her name's Kamari. She's age 19. She comes from a nearby village, but she now lives in Madan Perkader, right? And she recently enrolled in a computer center for um, 
uh, training, right? And it talks a lot about like what kind, how much money she makes, and, and what kind of uh, or how much money she has available, and what kind of uh, cell phone technology she has access to. She doesn't have her own, right? She gets to play on her brothers occasionally, right, and stuff like that. Uh, and so it's a very interesting description. You can really see how you could write a whole story about trying to convince. Um, this person or their father or whatever to actually purchase them a, a cell phone in this context. So a lot of times we actually go even further, we think about content pillars that support the brand essence and then we can create content around those pillars, right? So these are areas of focus that support the creation of content. So Coca-Cola, uh, its brand essence, you know, could be summed up as Coke brings joy, uh, which could result in a, a number of different content pillars, right? So you could have friendship, right? Like sharing is caring, spreading smiles, and Coca-Cola has used these different uh, content filters, uh, content pillars, sorry, at different times in their uh, creation, right? Uh, for instance, creating stories about, you know, a lot of the ads around Coca-Cola just show people hanging out sharing a Coke, right? Uh, and that's kind of a classic example of how you can create these content pillars. Right? And then that, that could be in the friendship space, and then maybe it's one where you know someone gives somebody a Coke and all of a sudden they smile, right? And that's kind of an example of creating content that's more in the spreading smiles space, right? And as you go forward with all these different uh, uh, content design, you can start thinking about what kind of content format you want to achieve your objectives, right? So some brands, have a uh, an essence that is much more attached to an emotional constraint where some are more rational, right? So in the case of, for instance, Nike, right, it's a very emotional uh, kind of uh, uh, attraction uh, a lot of times. And But, you know, even Nike could develop content that is more rationally focused, right? Um, and Volvo, you know, tends to be a little bit more towards the rational side, but they could also, you know, the video actually of, that they created for year 2016 was Latan was very emotionally filled, right? So it's possible to kind of span the spectrum. And so you need to think about where the content is gonna lie on this spectrum. And then you also need to think about what's the goal? Is the goal really to develop awareness or to um, actually create a purchase, right? Um, and so early on when relating to a customer, you might be more in the awareness space and later on more in the purchase space. And then depending upon that, you can kind of start to narrow down what kind of channels you're going to use, right? So if you want emotional awareness, right, you can call the, you can create something that's like um, the quiz to identify the uh, Volvo car that best suits your personality, right? Per somebody's not going to make a purchase on that probably, but they will become more aware of the brand, right? On the other hand, on the other case, you might have... Um, you know, a, a something that actually a calculator that you provide on your site that compares one Volvo car to other Volvo cars or, or and to other competitor cars, determining what's the most efficient, uh, things along those lines, right? Uh, and all over the space, you have different types of content that you might be able to provide. So essentially what we're saying that is that you want to formulate your marketing objective, your content format to match your marketing objectives, right? So you need to understand how, where the customer is in their customer journey, depending upon the content you're creating. The personas help you do that, right? Because they could talk about whether or not the person is a, a uh, just entering into the purchase market or someone who has been purchasing from you for a while. And then you need to, once you have the customer journey, then you need to find a content format that allows you to motivate them in the direction that you want them to motivate for that particular marketing objective. For example, a humorous video or an emotional video, like the ones we just saw, uh, that we just talked about, could attract the customers. But once attracted, right, a case study could be much more effective in motivating purchase. Uh, so this is, a, this is why you need to look at the content format and look at how it matches uh, the objectives you're trying to achieve.